Blessed Father God, in the name of your Son, Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. We are gathered together here this morning only because of your goodness and your mercy, your kindness, your love towards us, Father. Lord, it is by nothing that we did that we have this gift of life today, Lord. But it is because, Father God, of what your Son, Jesus, did for us. We are thankful for that gift, Father God. There is nothing that we can do to buy that gift. There is nothing that we can do out of ourselves, Lord, to, to gain a gift like that. It, it was because you chose us, Father. And when you called us, we responded and we said, here we are. We want to serve you faithfully. We want to be servants of our Master and our King, our Rabbi Yeshua. And so we pray today humbly, Father God, and we ask for the forgiveness of our sins and our transgressions, our iniquities and our wrongdoings. That through the Holy Spirit, the true Counselor, that you will help us to repent, Lord, of what is, is blocking our relationship with you, Father God. And so, Lord, as the Spirit of God shows us today, may we be courageous enough to repent to turn from our wicked ways and follow you faithfully for the rest of our days here on earth. We bring you glory, honor, praise, and thanks. We pray and we ask this in Jesus' name. And all God's people says, Amen, amen and Amen. Good morning, family. Good morning, friends. Good morning, visitors. No visitors. <laughs> Um, welcome to everyone here this morning. Um, just please allow me uh, one, two announcements. Um, I was I was thrilled yesterday to see that that we have we've got real men in our church family. We we had brother Julian on the roof yesterday, um, changing the the sheets metal for us. In the middle of that storm, it was amazing to see it. I, if I had a camera, I, I would have. He had a hammer in the one hand, and he had a, a an electric drill in the other hand, and he was catching lightning bolts, and he was drinking up the rain, and he was man, amen. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, 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 it was, brother Julian. That's a, that's what a professional would say. Yeah, so um, I, uh, I'm grateful that there's, there's people in our church that, um, that, that go all out to, to try and make uh, our, um, what is it, our Sunday here just a, a little bit more comfortable. Amen. Amen. And, and thank the Lord for, uh, for men and women like that. Um, and so may the Lord bless you, brother. Yeah, to catch more lightning bolts. I saw him stick them in his backpack. I don't know what he did with them afterwards, but <laughs> I uh, also do want to say uh, we are starting up the evening service again uh, tonight, six thirty. For anyone that is interested, and for anyone that is interested, um, we will be. I was led uh, during this week. Um, there will be a word given out tonight. I'm not going to say it's a prophecy. But there's a word that is going to be given out tonight from the heart of the Father for anyone that is interested um, for this year for our church. So if you are invested in our church, if you are invested in the Word of God, if you are invested in your relationship with Christ and you would like to hear that word, and, and again, family, we all know that um, a word can be taken and put into action or a word can be stored on a shelf or a word can absolutely be rejected. So it's all up to you. Amen. So if uh, uh, you are interested, that is uh, 6.30 tonight. And then please, if we can have the... Um, thank you, brother. This is our third week, family, for those who, who are new. Um, this is our third week that we are going into um, looking together as a family on discipleship. What, what is discipleship and how, how do we make disciples? 
why must we make disciples when must we make disciples where must we make disciples so we had a look at um the first week and uh for those who who were here we saw the first week was we looked at what the results in society will be if we stop making disciples <clears throat> now i'm sure that we don't have to look far to see the results already it's everywhere um people are people have become so self-absorbed so selfish that they do not go out anymore and care for or take care of another soul and and we can see that everywhere and it is promoted it's promoted in 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 media it's promoted all over um that uh I am the most important person and and so I have to look after myself and myself alone. Let the guy next to me look after his own life. If we get into the word of God and we adhere to or want to adhere to what Christ tells us, that's the wrong way at at looking at life. The complete wrong way. Yes, family? Yes. It takes sometimes a lot of effort to look after someone else that can't look after themselves yet. Okay? But we do it with our own children. We raise babies, family, that can't feed themselves, can't clothe themselves, can't walk by themselves. And so the Lord teaches us through that physical thing how to spiritually then look after someone else. Amen. Amen? When you come to the cross, the the, the Bible teaches us um, in the New Testament that when you meet Christ for the first time, you're a baby, you're drinking milk. Okay? The church is feeding you, the pastor is feeding you, the elders are feeding you, you've got a brother and sister in Christ that's, that's feeding you. Um, Christ himself is, is feeding you through the Holy Spirit. And so we need to get to a point where we take those, because they can't walk by themselves, they can't eat by themselves, can't, and then show them how to walk, eat, and, and, and grow. Amen? And so that was the first week. The second week we looked at um, to start making disciples, we first have to be a disciple. If that doesn't make sense to, to us, family, I, I, then I'm a rubbish preacher. I don't know what to say <laughs> outside of that. We have to be what we are trying to make. We have to. That is why the Word of God, I, 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 I didn't bring the scripture this morning but even the word of god says that in in nature you can't put a a, a, a camel and a donkey together you call this it doesn't work okay and so camels make camels donkeys make donkeys disciples make disciples Amen. yeah and so it's it's just it's pure biblical knowledge and logic family that i first have to be something if i want to make that same thing and so today we are going to have a look at the church and discipleship so us sitting here this morning so the first week we had a look at what the result is in society of not making disciples which is horrific and the second week, we saw that we have to, last week, we have to concentrate on ourselves. We have to first look at ourselves. First, build yourself up. First, I must first stop gossiping before I tell other people to stop. Amen. Now, I must first be able to preach and teach before I tell others to preach and teach. Amen. I cannot stand here in front of God's people and say, I want all of you to go out tomorrow and be street preachers, but I've never preached on the street before, ever. I can't do that family and so today we are going to look at biblically what happens um, in a church with discipleship and how much it has changed over the years I want to start off with with this brother Brian is is going to help me this morning just with a, a little bit of information and I want to say this before I ask brother Brian a question is this family what I am going to ask Brother Brian, most probably he won't say, maybe he won't say it, but I will. What I'm going to ask him right now, Brother Brian has got most probably the most knowledge of anybody of us sitting here on this topic. That's why I'm asking him. I don't. Okay? So I need knowledge, so I'm asking Brother Brian. Brother Brian, could you please tell me... Or, and tell us, what is this? 
It's a, uh, oops, it's a Aphis mellifera, or commonly known as the European honeybee. A honeybee, a European honeybee. European honeybee. Okay, so he, they, he hasn't immigrated yet. No. Okay. All right. So this is this is the the, the European um, honeybee. Uh, the South African one will have an AK on his back. And stings a lot more. Rubbish joke. Let's carry on. Um, anyway, so brother Brian, if I ask you, um, where in nature does this honeybee fit? What species is this? Could it, you tell us? It, it, it's, a, it's an insect because it's got three parts of its body and six legs. So it's an insect. Yeah. Okay, I, 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 I hear what you say, but I've done some research of, of my own and I'm pretty sure that this is a reptile. <laughs> yes? Um, no, no, it's, 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 it's not. Okay, but, but it's not, doesn't convince me. I'm pretty sure it is. It's, 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 it's def this is definitely a reptile. I've, I've done my homework. Um, so let's, uh, um, thanks for that, Brother Brian. I, I, I just want to just wanna be 100% sure. So I'm going to ask uh, Brother Julian. Brother Julian, do you agree with me? What is this? Oh, it's 100% reptile. It's a reptile. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so, so two, two outweigh one. So sorry, Brother Brian. With all your knowledge, um, yeah, the majority of us think this is a reptile. Okay. Family. <laughs> the way that we interpret yes. the way that we interpret things in life, that interpretation has to come from somewhere. I influenced um, Brother Julian. Was the hundred dollars enough? Yeah. <laughs> I influenced Brother Julian to agree with me on my interpretation of what Brother Brian said, okay? Please, I, I, family, I, I, I hope I'm, I'm, I'm clear this morning. Um, we cannot, in Jesus' name, as sons and daughters of God, open the Word of God and read a scripture and interpret it a different way to what it was written. We can't do that. Amen. Amen. Because when we do that, family, we step away from discipleship and we move in the direction of what this world is moving in. And that is all that this world wants to do, family. From the set time, this world has wanted to discredit the truth of the Word of God. And because the church has not been successful in standing firm and saying... No, you are lying. My God said this. This is what he meant. Because the church has not been firm on that, we are losing the battle by the day, family. And we are allowing the world to interpret our holy book as they wish. And then... To pay others to believe their interpretation. That family is most probably one of the most crippling things to discipleship that we can face as a church today. If we go further, family, we can see here Matthew 28. We've spoken about this over the past three weeks, if not um, further, Matthew 28, 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, said, family, it's an instruction that Christ Almighty is giving them and us. It is not a suggestion. It is not open to interpretation. Jesus said, go into all the nations and firstly make disciples, secondly baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then teach them to obey what I taught you to obey. There's no interpretation in that. It's a clear-cut um, instruction. 
But what the world has done, family, and sadly, a lot of the churches today has gone and said, listen, this, let me tell you what this means. Let me, as Jacques, tell you what this means. This means that as long as there's a pastor preaching and as long as people are walking into the church, this is what it means. We are making disciples here. Family, this is not what my Jesus and your Jesus said. He said, go out into all the nations and go and make disciples. What I am doing this morning is teaching. Amen. Amen. But by living every single day this word, that is making. I made myself a disciple when I came to salvation and picked this word up. Started reading it and then made my mind up that this word is more important than my mind. Amen. And that I will follow this word to the T, irrelevant of how it sounds to the people around me until the day that I die or my Jesus comes back as he went. Amen. 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 And so family, this is a clear message from the Father on his throne. He says to us in this scripture, God is not a human that he will lie. Not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? A question to us, rhetorical. Does he promise and not fulfill? Watch this, family. I, I found the translation from the direct um, Jewish Bible. Watch what this says. God is not a human who lies or a mortal who changes his mind. When he says something, he does it. Amen. And when he makes a promise, he will fulfill it. Maybe not in the way that Job wants him to. But if my God sent out a promise, he will fulfill it. He's not a human like you and I that will lie. And sometimes we make promises, like for Brother Julian, I, I said 150, but I only gave 100. <laughs> and then I justify why I yeah. broke the promise. God does not do that. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't. And so when we ask the Lord for something that's in the word, and we receive it in a different way, we thought we were going to get it, and we throw a hissy fit and a tantrum and we are tight and now and the, the pastor doesn't know what he's doing and the church is rubbish and, and, and everything maybe family we should like uh, King David said in the, in, in, in the book of Psalms be still and know that I'm God and I work the way that I want to work amen. I do it the way that I want to do it amen I create like I want to create family Biblical fact this morning. There are three ways that you can join a family. Three and only three. And I'm going to prove it in the word this morning, family. The first one is you can be born into a family. Jesus replied very truly. I tell you that no one can see the kingdom of God Unless he is born again, born into a family. Now, watch how beautiful this is, family. We had in this week someone that hadn't seen my twin boys for two, two and a half years maybe. And they saw them for the first time again this week and spoke to them and, and, and so on. And one of the very first things that that person did is text me and said, Shark, it's amazing how much your boys look like you. <laughs> Amen? Which is, look, if you're handsome, you're handsome, you have to pass it on. <laughs> <clears throat> and so family, what happens with birth is you walk, talk, look, eat, sleep, speak exactly like the people you came from. Amen? Amen. You look like your, your mom, you talk like your dad. 
You, you, you work like your dad, you, you um, serve like your mom. There are things that just come from being born into a family. When Jesus said, you cannot, my boy, my girl, enter into my kingdom if you are not born again. What Jesus is saying to you and me, family, is I want you, my son, my daughter, to look like me, to talk like me, to believe like me, to worship the Father like me. Amen. So that when people see us, even if I cannot speak and I'm mute, they can identify us as being like Christ because of the way we look. Amen? Amen. So one of the first things that we can join a family is being born. One of the next things is marriage. You can join a new family when you get married. Ephesians, listen what it says here, beautiful husbands, love your wives as Christ um, loved the church and gave himself for her. I have said this over and over again, family, this world must not be fooled by my small stature, by my thin little arms. They must not. If they lay a hand on my wife, I will fight to the death. They will have to kill me. Why? Because there's a scripture in the Old Testament that says, if you seek your death, touch another man's wife. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you seek your death, put your hands on my wife. I dare you. Yeah? And so, husbands love your wives, verse 26, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with the water through the word and to present her, her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. How amazing is that, family? So now you and I know that if husbands don't love their wives, don't treat their wives, they don't love themselves. Amen. Amen. So, I must love myself pretty much. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a day for horrible jokes, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. First one, family. How do we be part of a family? We are born into a family. Second one, how do we also be part of a family? We marry into a, a family. And, and listen, just a, a difference between the first and the second one. The, the first one you can't choose. The second one you can. Yeah? Thank you. Yeah. So, so you can marry into a family. If the family doesn't like you, 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 you move away to a different country. <laughs> the next one how do you be part of a family adoption Amen. listen what Galatians Amen. says to us but when the set time has fully come God sent his son born of a woman born under the law to redeem to save to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption Hallelujah. We weren't only born again into God's family. We were adopted into God's family. Oh, and by the way, we are the bride of Christ, so we married to him. We are threefold part of his family. <laughs> family, can, can we see how beautiful the word of God yes. is? And now, if we look at these three, how to become part of a family, we can see that all three are covered in one specific thing, family. One. Relationship. When a child is born into a family, immediately that child has a relationship with a mom. 
with the dad if you are good parents. If there's a, a, a brother and a sister, immediately there's a relationship. Immediately. The, the first time I saw my daughter, I, I knew there was nothing on earth that I would love more than her. Nothing. It's still like that now. She can come to me and say, Daddy, can I have a Porsche? And I'll say, my girl, give me 15 years. <laughs> so the child has an immediate relationship with the mom and the dad. When you get married to that beautiful vision of a woman that you, you, you saw and ask the Lord to, Lord, please help me talk to her without writing a bad man. And you have a relationship with your husband and your wife. When you are adopted, if you are good parents, the, the first time that you see that child at the adoption agency, you form a relationship with that child. You start speaking to them. What's your favorite color? I, 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 I love the shoes you have on. What sport do you like? There's a relationship immediately that is formed. And, and, and the further that you go and we go as family, the deeper the relationship should get. Amen. Amen. But no, this world family has come and unfortunately successfully told us that if you get halfway through your marriage and you are not satisfied anymore, you can chop and choose. You can let go of that old model and get a new one. And so this world has convinced us, family, as God's people, that relationship is not as important as the Word of God says it is. But yet we read these three scriptures and all three of them tie to relationship. And so family, we're going to see this morning something that we maybe don't want to see, but have to see going forward as a, a, a church. Have a look what the scripture says concerning relationship, family. John 14. Listen what Jesus said. Jesus answered, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one will go to the Father except through me. We will not be able to get to the Father without having a relationship with the Son. Amen. We need to know the Son, respect the Son, honor the Son, serve the Son. We need to worship the Son. We need to be in relationship with Jesus one day to be able to see the Father. It's not knowing of Jesus. It is knowing Jesus. There's a difference, family. Knowing of is someone you don't have a relationship with. Knowing someone is someone you have a relationship with. Amen? Amen. And so that's the first scripture on relationship. The second one on relationship is... Now, John 17, now this is eternal life that they, Father, may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That they may, do you know, family, in the original Greek translation, this word know means that they will have a relationship with you. This, family, is eternal life. That we will have a relationship with Jesus and the Father. We don't need this world to tell us who our Jesus is, family. We should know him. So that when they come to us and they say, you're Jesus this and you're Jesus that, we can say, no, my friend, I'm sorry, you are horribly mistaken. My Jesus this and my Jesus that. Why? Because I spent time with him this morning. I've got an appointment with him at 12 o'clock this afternoon. And before I go to bed tonight, I sit down and I look at him face to face. Face to face. And I listen to his beautiful voice. And I get up the next morning with a purpose to fulfill what he told me to do. Amen, family. And now we get to the nuts and bolts of everything. It is only family through relationship that we can one day enter into heaven. That is it. 
I cannot buy a ticket. I cannot study myself into heaven. If I become, uh, 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 if I, I gain a doctorate degree in, in theology or biblical studies, one that, that will not make me enter into heaven. If I treat everybody around me with dignity and respect for the rest of my life, but I still don't have a relationship with you, I won't enter into heaven. I won't. Because you know what, family? You and I maybe even know atheists that have got good morals. Mm -hmm. Atheists that tie to churches mm -hmm. because they want to claim. Atheists that, that do good things for good people, but they have no relationship with the Savior. And so they will not enter into heaven one day. And so the only um, way, or, or it's only through a relationship that we can enter into heaven. Now, family, we go back 2,000 years, okay? The Acts Church started on this foundation. If you have ever read the book of Acts, you will know that the disciples went out and formed relationships with people in the street and then brought them to their homes. Amen. They went out and they got to know people. They got to know this beggar because they had something for him. And they blessed him with that something. And when that beggar ran, through the whole of Jerusalem, praising God, when he came back, they said, now you are our brother, you are part of our family. Relationship. Amen. And the Bible teaches us, family, that they went out after receiving the true counsel of the Holy Spirit. They went out into the street and they started forming relationships. And 3,000 people loved what they were receiving from the disciples and they said, we want more. We want to be part of this. And 3,000 people came to salvation. And the 3,000 people were grafted into the Acts churches, into the various homes, and they were fed and they were clothed and they were treated with love and respect. And they were fed the word of God, the Torah and the, the, the prophets. And, and they sat down with Peter, Paul, James, John, Bartholomew as they were writing the New Testament to the churches. And maybe even those new um, found family members took some of those letters and said, we want to deliver this beautiful letter to the church in we are so excited to do why because this letter is going to form more relationships it's going to build more on the foundation that jesus has spoken of when he said go out and make disciples and so family it is god's original intention that everyone in the church become grafted into the church through their relationship with others in the church how beautiful is this, family? In the book of Acts, um, you, you could not get into a church if you were not invited. Does that make sense? You had to know someone in the church to be able to get into the church. And I'm going to explain why I say that um, um, uh, a bit further on, family. And so the Acts church was a large group of close friends and family. That's what the church started off as, as a family. People loving each other, people respecting each other, people edifying each other, encouraging each other, building each other up, strengthening each other. That's how the Acts Church started. Family, the Acts Church had no building. The Acts Church had no sign. It didn't have a logo. Yeah. It didn't have a physical address or a website. It had no YouTube channel, no physical location. Yeah. The churches were in homes, family. They were next to the Sea of Galilee. They were out in nature. That's where the churches were. That the church wasn't a building. The church was a family. That's what the church was. And then the only way into the church of Acts was through a loving relationship. That's the only way. Am I there? Yep. That's the only way that you could get into that church family. And now, sorry, just, just one. Uh, <clears throat> and so from there, family, 
We read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We jump into the book of Acts. The Holy Spirit at Pentecost blesses them. And they go out into the street and they, they, they make 3,000 more disciples through relationship. They go out and they, they, their number grows to 5,000. They go further and their number grows to 25,000. And, and it, it keeps on growing, family. Why? Why? Not because someone put it on Facebook. No. Because somebody made the effort to go to somebody's house and say, we heard that you were battling with this yeah, we would like to help you with it. Form the relationship. Did not step in there and judge them. Amen. Did not step in there and gossip. Amen. They stepped in there with one intention. And that was to form a relationship. An everlasting relationship with this family in this house. So that we can graft them into this loving family of our church. That Jesus spoke of in the book of Acts. And that they then in turn, can go out and form relationships with somebody else. Now, family, we fast forward to 2024, where we are sitting today. Please, family, I know we might be, it's been a long week and we are tired. The Lord <laughs> is speaking to our hearts this morning. We have to hear this. So please try and pay attention to what the Lord is saying to us here. When the Christian denominations were formed, in 1054 and the church buildings were set up the church then said anyone that wants to walk in can do so and it is no longer our responsibility to go out and make disciples so family look what the everlasting result was over thousand plus years is churches then restructured Sorry, churches stopped going. How did I miss that? Churches stopped going out to make disciples and said that it's not our responsibility anymore, it's yours. And now relationships were exchanged for mere numbers to see how big they can grow the church, but there were very little loving relationships in the church. How sad, family. This is not the recipe Christ gave us. Let's go further and see what we in the New Testament church have caused, family. Churches then went and restructured everything around church customers. We now have customers that step into churches. Why I'm saying that is you step into one church to shop there. Does uh, the, the, the music that is played... Um, is it music that I like? Uh, the pastor, when he preaches, does it tickle my ear or is it a little bit? And then if the, the, the church service is over um, and I don't like it, I can go and shop next Sunday at another church. And can we see how far we are separated, family, from the original recipe that Jesus Christ gave us? And now, family... Churches created eye-catching pamphlets and advertisement programs and social events. And they took that and they assigned it to ushers at the door to hand them out like businesses. This is our new menu. Have a look if you like our menu. If you don't like anything in our menu, tell us. We will change it to suit you. Amen. Amen. No amens. And so family, what has happened is relationship has been taken out of church and churches have said to the Holy Spirit, you please stand one side because we have got such good advertisements. We advertise, look how great this advertisement is and look what we do on Saturday nights at this time. Come to see what we do in this building. Come here quickly. Here's another menu that you can go and have a look at to see if you like this menu. This is all for you. It's all to satisfy you and your desires. This is what's happening at this church. And, and, and if you don't like it, we can restructure it around you. Please just don't go and shop 
at another place. Have a look how awesome this looks. Rock music and punk hairstyles and, and, and lights and just so that we can keep you. Family, churches composed energetic, lively church services with loud music, extravagant multimedia, and entertaining messages designed to attract and retain a low commitment crowd. No commitment in the church. No commitment at all, family. No commitment to make relationships. No commitment towards the word of God. No commitment to go out and make disciples. Family, can we see that we are in trouble? Can we? Even if but just two of us can see that today, we are in trouble, family. We have stepped away from a church that started with the Holy Spirit to us today saying, Spirit of God, we don't need you. We've got programs. We've got social events. We've got loud music and lights. We've got a preacher that preaches what you want to hear. Spirit of God, we don't need you anymore. And then we wonder, family, why the church is split, why there's no unity, why in the churches there's divorces, why in the churches um, uh, uh, children don't listen to their family, their, 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 their parents. We wonder why, family. It's because we removed the one thing that caused the church to grow, the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And we think by standing up every Sunday and giving a word that, amen, that that, that, that is all that the Holy Spirit can do. No. After that, we switch him off and then we continue with our program. Family, we are in trouble. In Jesus' name, we must click this today. The fogginess in our brains must disappear, family. Do you know how bad it is when you step into a church and the church has to be your family and you extend your hand to greet someone and they say, don't touch me because you're not vaxxed. Mm. Amen, family. Mm. Come, let's, let's speak like adults today, family. Let's look at the truth in the eyes. Do you know that we have greeted people that have sat in churches that if you extend your hand to greet them, the person says, please don't touch me, you're going to steal my Holy Spirit. Family, what are we learning in churches these days? That that person thinks that they're the only one that possesses the Spirit of God. We are in trouble, family, if we cannot see this. This world is going to, they, they, they're going to rule us very soon. We saw it four years ago. They ruled us. They conquered our churches. They split us in half. They divided our churches and said there's two groups in every church now. And one group is lower than the other. Can we see, family, how far we are from what Jesus intended the church to be? It has all become about me, whatever I want. If I don't want this in Alton Baptist Church, this foreign pastor is preaching things I don't like, I'll go to another church. Why, family? Because there's no commitment in our lives anymore at all. It's all about me, me, me. If uh, this church doesn't play the music that I like, we'll go and look for another church. If this church doesn't preach what I want to hear, I'll just go to another church. That's all. No fellowship, no relationship, no commitment. We are in trouble, family. Let's be open and honest. Churches have been gathering customers instead of committed members. We have been advertising ourselves, family, like the world advertises new products. And you know what the funny thing is, family? We hold social events 
at church to gather someone from the world to come into the church, but then the, own, the, the, the members of that church doesn't even come to the social events. Yes. The members on book don't even come to the church things. Yeah. They don't come to the Bible studies. They don't come to the prayer meetings. They don't come to the, 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 uh, the, the barbecues. Their own members. Yeah. How in Jesus' name are we then supposed to grow the church with relationships, family, if the own members of the church doesn't even want to be part of the church? Yeah. There's very little devotion these days to the word. We started off with this family. I can read this word and interpret it like I want. Amen. Amen, brother Manny. There's very little devotion to the word. There's very little devotion to church. And when I say church, the body of Christ to each other. Uh, let, let, let him sort his own life out. I, I, I sorted mine out. Family. That's why we are falling. That's why our marriages are breaking up. That's why our children are disobedient. Yeah? If you are afraid to, to, to discipline your children, there's someone else in the church that will help you do it. Amen. Here's one. Send them to me for a weekend. They'll be cured, family. <laughs> there's very little devotion to relationships. There's very little devotion towards one another and family, this last one is huge. There's very little devotion to respecting each other. Respecting each other. You know, family, you know my Bible teaches me that the elder men in the church are my fathers. The elder women in the church are my mothers. The, the, the younger men in the church are my brothers and the younger women in the church are my sisters. If, if I, I was raised in a house that if I went to my dad and I said to him, hey, dude, okay, I would be minus an eardrum every second week. Don't do that. Respect, family. Let me, let me say this. Um, when the queen was alive, think about this, family. We're getting real here now. When the queen was alive, and maybe she came to New Zealand for, for a, a visit or a tour. And you were standing in the queue and you met her. And, and I, I don't think it's protocol that you're allowed to shake her hand. But when she got to you, was it right for you to say, hey, mate, what's up, mate, to the queen? No, her guards would shoot you. Yeah, you had to bow. And yeah. You, okay, family, can you see what, what I'm saying? But in the church, yeah. we don't treat each other with respect. Right. We don't. Mm -hmm. Family, can we see that we are in trouble? Can we see it? If we can't, I'm not doing a good job this morning. So there's very, very little devotion. And now I'm going to end with this. And then everyone might be, oh, thank the Lord. <laughs> I'm going to end with this this morning, family. Acts. Acts chapter 2. Let's have a look what this beautiful scripture says to us. This is speaking of the disciples in the church of Acts where they formed relationships with each other. It says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. First of all. Okay? They weren't proud enough to say, I know everything. No. They went to the apostles and said, I know nothing. I want to sit under your teaching. I, I, I want to know what this book says so I can go out and live it. Because living this book causes more people to want this book than just speaking about it. Amen. And so they devoted their, um, their, themselves to the apostles' teachings and to fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and to prayer. Look how many things they devoted themselves. Family, do you know what devotion is? I have devoted my life to my wife. I belong to her. She belongs to me. Oh no, Jacques, you can't say that in, in, in today's society. No, we, we, we don't belong to... Yes, we do. Amen. She belongs to... She's mine. Amen. Nobody else's. And I'm hers. Amen. That's it. Just like I am Christ's, I don't belong to anyone else. Amen. So you can't come and force your stupid teaching on me because I don't listen to... I listen to Jesus. Because I belong to Him. And so they devoted them to... Verse um, 43... 
everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. Family, again, please, let's be honest. Where's our signs and wonders these days? Where is it, family? Where can we have someone sitting in church today that is sick and pray for them and immediately they're healed? Can I tell you why, family? Because we've removed the most important aspect of church out of church. And we've said, Spirit of God, we don't need you. We can do it better. Because if I pray for someone and they're not healed, it's not my fault, it's theirs. They don't have faith. Amen. Isn't that what we are taught these days, family? Instead of saying that we must go and fall down on our knees day and night until we are clean enough for the Spirit of God to live inside of us and then let Him do the work. Listen, family, I'm going to be open and honest this morning. This world doesn't want to hear Jacques preach. A lot of people sitting in church today looking at me in my eyes doesn't want to hear Jacques preach. They're sitting here because they have to be here. Come family, let's be straight this morning. Amen? Amen. And so we have removed the most important aspect of church and we've said we can do it better. We've got advertisements, we've got a YouTube channel with 800 and whatever, we can do it better. And so verse 44, family, let's all smile and look at this this way. Next Sunday, this church might be empty or it might be full. <laughs> Amen. Verse 44, all, not some, all the believers were together and had everything in common. What does that mean? That they all like motocross? That they all like baking? No. They had this Amen. word in common. Amen. Jesus says to me in this word, I must do it. Everybody agrees on the same thing. They go out and they do it. Yep. Jesus said to us, we must go out to make disciples. Right, guys, what are you doing tomorrow? We're going out and making disciples. That's it. And, and nobody's staying at home because everyone had everything in common. How beautiful is that, family? Today, you have two, three, four people in a church working their backs off until they land up in hospital because the rest are just customers. And so, verse 45, they sold property and possession and gave it to anyone who had need. Oh, no, no, Jacques, you don't understand. Do you know how long I've worked for my possessions and my property? There's no way that I'm giving it to anyone else. Exactly, because there's no devotion. There's no devotion to the word. Please be clear, family. I'm not saying you must go and sell everything. I'm saying listen to the Spirit of God. Listen to what He says. Every day. Not on some days. Every day. They continue to meet together in the temple courts. They had church every day. And look where they met. In the temple court. The outer court. Why? To gather more people through relationship. Amen. Oh, you don't have to believe in, in, in this law anymore. Jesus has given us a new one. Yeah. Come join us. Amen. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Glad and sincere hearts. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were customers. No. Those who were saved. Amen. Through this recipe, daily people were saved. Daily. I've been preaching here for four years, family. I can't count on one hand how many people have stood up and given their life to the Lord. Four years. Now, either I'm a rubbish preacher or there's something else horribly wrong. Because this is what church is supposed to be like. Daily, people were added to their numbers, those that were saved. 
Not those that wanted to come to church to, to just fish. No, not those who, who, who had their own, but no, those who were saved. Biblically saved. Family relationships makes disciples. Relationships. To form relationship, and you know how bad it has become in some churches, family, that some people in some churches have been so um, alienated, pushed one side, kept under the foot, that they no longer are able to go out and make disciples. They're too broken because this recipe isn't being followed anymore. And so have a look what Philippians 2 says to us from verse 1. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common um, sharing in His Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make your joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and mind. As we are seated here this morning, family, we are all divided. Yeah. All of us. Some of us believe the earth is billions of years. Others believe the Bible says it's 6,000 6, years. That's it. Some of us believe this. Others believe that. And family, can we see why we are unsuccessful in making disciples but just calling customers to churches? This is worrying some family, at least for me. Yeah. This is... It's tragic this, that in a thousand years we have gotten to, to this. And if we do not stand up and do something about it, family, in the next 10, 20 years, look how much in the past five years this, this life has changed. Look how much, family. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, valuing Others above yourself. I think we spoke about this last week. Treat the person you are speaking to as if they are more important than you. Amen. Verse 4. Not looking to your own interest, but to each other's interest or to the interests of others. Verse 5. In your relationships with each other, having the same mindset as Jesus. Can we see here, family? But when we speak to each other, we've got all sorts of other mindsets. That's why we are unsuccessful in discipleship. Listen what Jesus, this is the example that Jesus is setting. Verse 6, this is Jesus who being the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used as an advantage. Amen. As an advantage. How long has this world not tried to fight for equality? Let's get everyone equal. Okay. But the equality that they are fighting for is the wrong type of equality, family. It still puts you in a class that you should not be in. And so verse 7, rather, Jesus made himself nothing. A servant of Christ, amen. By taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death and even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name above every name that at the um, the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Lord and more. Is this what we all have in common, family? When we gather together on a Sunday, when we gather together at our social events, is this what we have in common? Is to exalt the name of Jesus Christ. To have people see Christ in me. Not, not who I am. Not where I come from. I am tired, family, of telling people who I am and where I come from. Um, I'm, I'm really tired because it has got no relevance to building God's kingdom at all. At all, who I am. I could maybe tell them who I was. Yes, 
And hopefully, by the way I'm treating them now, they can see who I am now. Amen? Because how can I tell people that I belong to Christ? I, I At a social event, at the barbecue, oh, my name is Jacques, we, we come from South Africa, I, I was born in Rhodesia, they didn't like us there, they kicked us out there, they didn't like us in South Africa, they kicked us out there. Hopefully we'll be able to stay here, we, we don't know, uh, before we, we kicked out. And so that, that's who, who, who I am. Um, uh, oh, and by the way, can you see that person over there? Just don't go and talk to them. They, they huh? Family, how, how can they then see Christ in me by doing something like that? Or by saying to them, listen, everybody here loves Christ more than you can imagine. It doesn't matter who you go and talk to here. They will, they will display Jesus. They will speak of Jesus. They, they will overflow with Jesus. Because he is the one that saved their soul. I did not become who I am today because of me. Believe me, family. I only became who I am today because of Jesus Christ. Because of the Lord God Almighty. And so, family, I, I, I want to plead with everyone here this morning for the sake of our souls and the sake of the souls out there that are busy killing themselves every day. Because this world says that that's the right way to go. I am pleading with us this morning to devote yourself, family, to relationships that build the church. And when I say church, I mean the body of Christ. I do not mean a building. Mm -hmm. To devote ourselves to the word of God. And if the word says so, we do it. There's no interpretation. If the Lord says go left on Tuesday, we go left on Tuesday. If he says go right on Wednesday, we go right on Wednesday. That is it. I have always said to the teenagers, I'll end with this, that we minister to. If the Lord God Almighty told me to walk on my hands every Friday, I'll do that. Amen. I won't question it. He knows why. Amen. We don't need to question God, family. He knows what he's doing. If you just look at nature around you, the Lord knows what he's doing. And so let us at least try, family, and devote ourselves in this week to the body of Christ, to relationships, to the Word of God. Family, do you know, do you know how, how easy it has become? Um, we don't walk around singing praises to God anymore. It's much easier to, to put on a, a playlist on our phone and let that play. No, family, sing. Sing. Amen. King David didn't have an app. No. He had an appetite to serve the Lord. Amen. That's the only app he had. Was to worship the Lord. One day in the house of the Lord. That's all I need is just one day. Amen. Amen. Family. Let's go out this week and let's now I wanna I wanna end this this morning. And I want to put every one of our hearts to test. If we are sitting here this morning and we have seen the truth of what the Lord has shown us in the word, that we are in trouble, family. We, truly, we are truly in trouble, really. We are running programs. We are not making, ma making churches. We are not making disciples. We're running programs. And so if you have received that revelation through the Spirit of God this morning, I want to ask you, to stand to your feet this morning as we repent of this. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord. I want to be the first one this morning as the, the shepherd and the leader of this church, Father God. And I, I, I repent this morning, Father, of trying all sorts of fancy seminars and, and, and fancy messages and channels and all sorts of worldly things to grow your church father god and and, and the body of christ and and then I, I i i go to sleep at night father and i'm still so frustrated because there's no growth lord there's no devotion there's no dedication there's no servanthood there's no love lord jesus and and and, and i repent today of that father 
We pray, Father God, that you will cleanse us and clean us and purify us by the blood of Jesus Christ this morning, Lord. That you will set us free, Father, of this thing that we have willingly placed ourselves into, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that the Spirit of God will dwell richly in us and among us. That the Spirit of Jesus Christ will cause us to have a heart for the lost, Lord. And to build relationships with each other. Lord, to, to stop telling each other how to live their personal lives, but Lord, just to love each other. Amen. Love each other Amen. as Jesus loves the church. Yes, Jesus. Lord, I, I pray, please, Father God, I, I am thinking in, in, in my small mind, Lord Jesus, that you, you, you must be weeping, Lord, because of the absolute mess that we have made here on earth, Father God. And if we are, are, are man enough, we will admit that today, Lord Jesus. I, I humbly pray, Father, that you will forgive us and that you will help us going forward, Lord. That when we worship, we will worship, Father God. That it will not be a concert, Lord. When we preach and teach, Father God, that it will be because we are obedient to your word father and we devote ourselves to the teachings of the apostles father please take us into this week lord and have us examine our, our own lives lord so that we may return whether it is five next week or 500 next week lord jesus that we will return next week and we will be devoted to making disciples and building your kingdom Blessed, blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. We bring you glory, honor, praise, and thanks. And all God's people says, amen. amen and amen. Family, if you need prayer for anything this morning, please come and join our elders up front here. Have a beautiful week. Thank you.